25 seconds here, guys, and then we will uh, watch here. So maybe we can roll our breaking news 20 seconds out. All right. And we are coming in here. Got the 15 minute chart open EuroCAD, CAD yen, dollar CAD, top left. Let's see if we get any volatility off of today's CAD GDP numbers. All right. Numbers should be coming out here. Dollar CAD dropping a little bit. CAD strength coming in against the Japanese yen. Euro CAD down a bit here. Uh, trading 15 pips down so far. Dollar CAD, not too much of a move there, about 11, 12 pips. Uh, 15 pips at the max. CAD yen trading off the lows by 17 pips or so. There's a little bit of volatility here, guys. Uh, let's go take a look at that number and see what we've got. Okay, so CAD GDP came out at 0% uh, compared to the forecasted uh, contraction by 0.1% month over month. This is actually um, slightly better than expected for Canada, right? So what would this do to the Canadian dollar? Even if you don't trade the CAD, guys, this is good stuff to practice right? CAD GDP, the economic numbers, the economic growth came out flat, but the forecasts were for shrinking economy stuff, right? So that would be generally considered bullish for the currency, right? Of course, in this case, the Canadian dollar. So what do we see happening to the Canadian dollar? Here it goes. The CAD yen shoots up. The dollar gives back some gains against the Canadian dollar and the euro gives some gains back against the Canadian dollar as well. Is this going to have a lasting impact? Well, it's not really huge news. Generally speaking, GDP numbers for uh, Canada are not going to move the markets massively, but it is still something useful, especially if you're paying attention to the CAD. We have, um, we have uh, someone coming on the show here today. Chandler, I would ask, also, Chandler is our producer behind the scenes. Uh, ask Ivan or anybody else who would like to come on, uh, as we do have an extra long stream today. I could definitely use some uh, some co-hosts to uh, to help elongate the show a little bit. But uh, yeah, so reaction to the news here, CAD strength did come in slightly, nothing nothing massive. Um, though you can see the dollar against the Canadian dollar giving back some of its gains here. So I'll pull up, we talked silver. I wanna come back to gold for a moment, see what's going on with price action here this morning. Again, gold on the lower time frames. A lot of day traders, I've been seeing it all over my Twitter feed. A lot of day traders are very long on gold. Want to stay up to date with all the latest trading information? In the description below, you'll find the link to join our free Discord. The Discord gives you instant access to lots of helpful material like free trading courses, chart analysis, updates about what's happening in the A1 community, as well as discount codes for our other products and services. The best part, all of this and more is 100% free. So go down in the description below this video and check it out for yourself. If you're interested in upgrading to the full VIP Discord featuring our team of expert traders signals, you can use the live chat link in the description to get connected with one of our team members in seconds. So don't wait, go check out the free Discord today. And you know, the gold market, I think, does have room to go higher in the short term. But I've been pretty cautionary to people who are watching this. You have to be aware of the higher time frames. As this 15 minute chart does look good, be careful as you come into some higher time frame levels of resistance. You've got, um, I think you have possibly some room to see a move up to, you know, 1968 and possibly if bulls really get going, 1980. But I would caution traders as we do, and I'd love to get Frank's thoughts on this too, um, interest rates are now forecasted to go higher than expected. And this has put a lot of pressure on the gold market. So I would say personally, even though I would love to be a gold bull, I'm kind of not really thinking we have that much room higher if we trade up to the 1980 due to higher than expected interest rate forecasts now pricing into the market. Frank, what do you think about all that um, so now I think we're thinking 60% chance uh, that in the June 14th meeting, we see another rate hike. What's your take on that in relation to, to gold? Yeah, so sentiment obviously changed pretty quickly. Um, 
I'm not really sure what the overall, you know, decision will be. The the odds increased, but you know, the the jump from last week to this week was pretty big in in probability. So I'm not sure where it's going to go. But you know, I still have a bullish bias towards gold just because of this um this long-term trend line it kind of bounced off. Um then the fact that we're nearing the end of interest rates um you know obviously a hike wouldn't be good news for gold but we're kind of towards the end anyways and we've talked about this before just whether they pause or do one more hike it's kind of kind of the end for for interest rates for a while at least is what it looks like so i'm still kind of bullish on gold and this looks kind of like an area where investors don't want to touch it which is also kind of an incentive for me to to start looking just because you know at least an attempt here on the one day chart where it's hitting this pivotal level it's not that much downside compared to the upside so if you wanted to risk you know just the the lows below that that one daily candle or the trend line versus like okay i'm risking that to to look at like another test at the highs of 2060 2070 so to me it looks like a good a good trade right now but you know could also break under if we see that if nfp comes out tomorrow or not tomorrow friday and um is just you know blows it out of the water then we're gonna have to worry about another rate hike for sure so I think today's going to be pretty volatile, or this week will be very volatile for gold. It's just a matter of, of what economic news is coming out. Yeah, no, and um, <clears throat> a lot of good points there because, again, to your point, even if they do rate hike, um, I, I generally lean in the same direction as you when it comes to uh we're, we've got to be somewhere near the end of the of of the rate hiking cycle. We do see inflation cooling. Though recently it's been sticky. Last week we had PCE numbers that came out stronger than expected. Um, speaking of inflationary stuff, Frank, you're pulling it up here on the inflation chart. We do now have, this is something, um, a new addition to the Edge Finder and a little bit of context. We're, we're, a, uh, we're, we're a software company in Atlanta. We are trying our best to build the best platform out there for traders who want to incorporate fundamentals and uh, you know technicals into their trading. We've recently added the PPI numbers, which are the producer price index numbers that show um, inflation, but not necessarily on the consumer side, but rather on the producer side. This is, of course, up the chain. If you're thinking about a supply chain where you know you guys walk to the store, you get your toothpaste. Well, behind that is a whole industry of you know manufacturing and, and transportation and railroads and you know uh, manufacture. There's so many different levels to it. So. A producer price index can be a nice way to look up the chain as to how uh, prices are are changing. Um, and Frank, you've got it pulled up here. What's our what's our latest on the uh, the PPI numbers here? Yeah, so I just pulled up the three for now. I wanted to look at dollar, kiwi, and yen. Um, so what I like to see, or what I'm liking right now, is that kind of peak. And you know the turnaround in both CPI, consumer and producer prices. So um, promising stuff. I don't really know about the yen to be honest because of uh, their dovish statements, probably like a month ago now, where they were talking about okay, we're going to focus on on the yen or on, on the economy rather than the yen. So what we see there is kind of a a divergence in direction between dollar, kiwi, and yen because CPIs clearly go into the upside whereas other other countries are more hawkish. So what, what yeah. you would want to look for in this chart at least if you're trying to interpret it is if you're if you're trying to trade a hawkish or hawkish or dovish sentiment regardless, you want to look at the direction of the chart because this not only gives you historical data, but also projects it. Um, so we have um, 
US dollar kind and of real peaking. quick, Frank, if if you don't mind just jumping out of the the presenter mode, I think it's at least on the the end user, it's very small text. If you could just go out of that for oh, a second, yeah. just so we can see what you're talking to some of those texts. I think I got to after stream change the font size to them anyways. But yeah, there you go. So you've got the two different charts here. Sorry to cut you off. Keep going. No, so um, actually, this one is not projecting. But we are working on it, so hang tight on that. Um, yep. We have, uh, so all I was trying to say is the yen's going up, dollar's coming down, Kiwi's kind of plateauing. Um, you know, just something to look at. You want to look at the direction of the chart, and um, eventually we're going to have projections, so like forecasts, like four quarters in advance. Um, we're working on a uh, not a smart bank tracker, a uh, central bank tracker. So we have this Fed one, but we're going to kind of, you know, add to it and turn it into a central bank tracker. So you can track the inflation rates and the, uh, the interest rates for the, the next year or so, which is going to be pretty cool because you'll have historical and forecasts. And then we get to kind of measure a hawkish or dovish environment for any currency. So that's something. I'm pretty excited about me and Nick have been working on that for a while. Yeah. And I think, uh, sorry, Frank, I went off on a tangent so, there. No, no, you're good. I think, um, what you're pointing out in terms of the PPI numbers here, you've got the New Zealand dollar, the U S dollar and the Japanese yen. And, um, what we're seeing in those areas is that we're seeing inflation cooling, right? Uh, we're seeing a decline in inflation in those areas. And it is of course, um, putting pressure on things like the dollar but not not recently right we've seen some dollar strength as um you know some some economic numbers have shown some resiliency i think that the dollar uptrend here and i've said this for a little while i think it's kind of short-lived like i don't necessarily think it's it's you know a new bull market and we're going back to the you know 115s or anything like that i think that it's short-lived we had the debt ceiling concerns um we also have had uh, some, again, some forecasts for further rate hikes. It'll be very interesting as we get closer to that June 14th meeting, especially with NFP jobs this this um, this Friday, to see where we go to uh, in terms of forecasts after that, right? Because again, if jobs numbers, to your point that you made earlier, if jobs numbers come out very, very uh, strong, it's going to look like more rate hikes are coming. Whereas if you get jobs numbers this week that are um, uh, slowing or, or less impressive, uh, it is possible that that, could, that pendulum could swing back. So instead of 60% chance of a rate hike, we see that kind of uh, fall apart into more of a, um, more of a, okay, they're probably gonna pause. And so we've seen that story flip flop over and over back and forth, uh, but it, it, it's been an interesting one to watch uh, in terms of the dollar, which has continued to trade higher. I think the dollar may have short term, a little bit more room to the upside, perhaps a move up to that 105 daily resistance that we marked on our charts. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at with it. You mentioned longer term gold has some support. Uh, clearly this level here recently around uh, 1936, uh, has been a pretty strong area for bulls and you mentioned this longer term trend line to the upside uh, that you've got drawn on your chart that seems to be getting hit as well so it's it's at a it's certainly at a decision point gold has got to either make sort of a a breaking point back to the upside or it's got to break lower underneath the lows again i am long silver uh, in the metals market of course um frank i don't know if you caught that uh, that update that i've got on my silver position i've sold uh, I've sold puts on silver uh, and I have a silver position on as well within the discord group. Uh, so in terms of silver and in, in terms of gold, I, I am longer term bullish, hence why I have a position on. Uh, I just don't know if we're at the bottom right now. And again, I think it's a hard call right ahead of NFP numbers to try and make that decision. Um, what do you think about uh, so So we talked gold here. What else are you looking at on the currency side? Are you looking at yen pairs or dollar right now? What are you looking at, Frank? Um, yes and no. I got stopped out of dollar yen. Um, okay. Once the bond yields turn back. But I am in Euro Kiwi. I'm still trailing that. I I just like these um 
these channel moves. A lot of the pairs that I've been looking at have been in this sort of channel and they, they're good at completing the moves. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. I'm trying to take Euro Kiwi to the top, which is probably like 1.8 something. Um, so got in a pretty good position around this green bar, just trailing and, and hoping to, um, to see to see some upside so i'm i'm pretty bullish euro even though smart money kind of scaled out they're still the strongest on the um on the cot side whereas kiwi is somewhere in the middle but it's also very very dovish like the yen where the uh the governor or is that his name or he like he said something yep. about discontinuing the rate hikes and and just keeping it as is i think kiwi's the highest um they get the highest yield out of like all these major currencies so they're gonna hang there for a while and then probably cut just like the us like next year or something so currency strength kind of declining looking more dovish overall. All right, here we go. Let's see if we get any reaction to Jolt's numbers. S&P immediately selling off. Euro dollar selling off. Dollar strength coming in dramatically here. Gold also rejecting just off that 1970 mark. And we're just watching the reaction here. Dollar strength uh, showing its teeth right now. Let's see what we got in terms of Jolt's numbers. Uh, Job openings, hotter than expected at 10 point, back above the 10 million mark. Uh, forecasts were only 9.41 million, and yet Jolt's job openings came in at 10.1 million. So showing higher than expected uh, job openings here in the United States. That is uh, quite, quite the number here. We've got gold selling off from its 1973.7 high. We've got the S&P selling off as well, um, as this is probably driving some fear that, again, rates may be due to go higher. Dollar strength, 104.48 here, uh, trading off the lows. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you want our broker recommendation, access to our free Discord, free Edge Finder, or want to chat with us on Telegram. Remember, you can watch us live in the markets every morning starting at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and we have lots more free trading tools and content available on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching.